<laughs> hey guys, I'm Alina, I'm Artea, and I'm Jada. India has been conquered by others like the British Raj and the Mongols for a period of time that influenced the future of India. If you have watched the first part of the India screencast, you will understand the British, the Portuguese, and the Dutch have all tried expanding their powers and influence to India. As you go through our presentation, you will understand even more of the sweeping history, culture, and wonders of India. During the 17th century, the British were able to acquire multiple new cities and new locations to expand their trade. The Dutch and the British were able to move into Bengal. The Dutch's trade in spices escalated, and the British made their stand in the textile trade. The British realized that their trade could further increase without the Mongols' restraints and laws, and they decided to dominate with force. Unfortunately, the British failed and were punished by the Mongol Empire. In 1717, the British finally reached an agreement with the Mongols. They would only need to pay an annual flat rate fee in order to gain the right to trade textiles freely. At the bottom left corner, we can see a flag. In 1801, the East India Company, or EIC, created a company flag, but it was defunct in 1874. The Battle of Plassey was important for the future of India as well as trade, wealth, and power in India. As the ESA began, began, began to expand its trade in there, Suraj Adullah, the ruling Nawab in Bengal, attacked the British in Calcutta. Although Suraj had returned Calcutta to EIC power, Robert Clive began negotiating with lower rank elites and managed to convince the elites to turn their back to Suraj. In 1757, Robert Clive led his troops to Plassey in order to overtake Siraj, who had no chance of success since his troops were bribed to flee the battlefield. After Siraj was killed, North Rule was shifted to Merjavar and eventually Merkwazam, but was moved when the British did not receive as much land, money, or power as they wanted. In 1765, Mongols hand over Bengal, Bahar, and Orissa to EIC via the Treaty of Allahabad. EIC can now collect revenues and govern the region. The British used seroin and exploitation in order to gain revenue. The EIC tried to form a loyal company or er, loyal army of sepoys, which were Indian soldiers, but the British bribed their soldiers into working for them. They offered higher salaries, and in turn, the sepoys put down any rebellions to the British rule. In Bengal, the EIC rule was called permanent settlement, lasting until 1947. Zamindar landlords were financially supported to exploit laborers on their land. In order to avoid punishment by the EIC, Zamindars heavily punished and oppressed peasants. Tipu Sultan, ruling Mysore since 1782, worked with peasants to create favorable living and working conditions. Sultan was aware of British presence and has fought three wars with Britain. Unfortunately, Tupu was defeated in 1799. The British replaced him with a puppet government. Like Tipu Sultan, the Marathas also fought back against the British, but the Marathas were not united amongst themselves. By 1818, the EIC had taken all over the Maratha territories. The EIC then began to expand outwards, causing a war with Afghanistan and successfully conquering Singapore and Myanmar. When the ruler of Punjab, Rajat Singh, died, the British took this opportunity to take control of the region. In 1845, the British set up a ruling body in the city of Lahore. The EIC made a deal with Galab Singh in the Kingdom of Kashmir, where Galab was assigned to rule over the Kashmir Valley through a treaty of Amritsar. Governor General Dalhousie created laws from the EIC in order to convert areas of indirect British rule to direct rule. The British Raj demanded for particular crops that did not benefit peasants, such as indigo. As textiles became less popular to trade, raw materials such as sugar and rice also became high in demand. With the Indian railway system, the EIC was able to gain more profits from domestic trade and exert power over any different groups. Dalhousie built a canal from the Ganges River to bring water to lands with otherwise fertile soil, improving the lives of peasants but also causing environmental problems due to saltation of the soil. Dalhousie introduced 
many advancements to enable the development of India, but occurred only in exploitative terms, which meant majority of profits went to the British. The British relied on Elias to assert their rule and learn Indian social customs. Indian Elias learned of British social customs and used various European structures of life. In Kakura, the Indian Elias and British founded the Hindu College in 1817. Indians received education in English, improving employment chances under the British Raj. English instruction became important for well paying jobs since the official government language shifted from Persians to English. A teacher at the Hindu College, Henry de Rosio, tried to influence people to think, to think that British civilization was a lot better than some Indian ways. He preached criticisms of daily Indian life. In the 1800s, he founded an organization known as the Young Bengal. The group debated social norms, values, and civilization itself. They questioned Indian society and tried to push towards angulinization, which is converting to more English ways. From the Yam Bengal grew the, Be the Belgian Renaissance. This was a time of cultural and political growth for Bengali elites. The leader of this movement was Ramon Roy. His knowledge of global developments and politics let him begin an organization known as the Brahmo Samaj. The Brahmo the Samaj consists of Bengali elites. Their main goal was to develop more British social reforms and apply them in unique Indian ways. All this happened and the printing press was introduced to India, since they now had a means to communicate with each other. National bonds began to grow amongst the Indians against British rule. The very first battle against British rule took place in 1857. The first started as a revolt within the British military. Even though the supplies enjoyed higher, higher salaries, the British generals and leaders looked down on them. The supplies were the ones who initiated the battle. One of the most famous stories about the rebellion is the story of the Queen of Jersey. The state did not have a ruler due to the lack of a king. When the Queen heard of the battle against the British, she quickly took over took up arms and valiantly led the army of Jansi into battle. She died a noble death. The rule of India has been both peaceful and bloody. Some rulers have went with the method of peaceful rule and succeeded while others have decided with the stricter and oppressing rule and failed. We can learn from the history of one country and see the influence that it that is made on the country when they finally became independent. India is a diverse country with many languages, culture, ethnicity, and origins, but Nevertheless, they have succeeded as a successful country. Thank you for your time and patience to go through our presentation.